What's up guys, welcome back to the King of Random Kitchen. You guys have been asking for it, you guys have been waiting for it, so in today's episode, I'm finally doing it. I'm teaching you how to make liquid nitrogen. I've been really hesitant to put out a video on how I make liquid nitrogen because honestly, my setup isn't very professional. It's all jury rigged together and it doesn't look great, but it does work. And what I'm starting to realize is you guys don't really care what it looks like, you're more interested in how it functions. And so that's what we're getting into today. Now, if you go outside and take a deep breath, you're filling your lungs with about 20% oxygen, 79% nitrogen, and 1% other gases. Now, the first step in making liquid nitrogen is just to take the regular atmosphere and compress it into some kind of a container that can hold it under pressure. Once it's under pressure, we can pass it through a nitrogen membrane, which will separate the oxygen and the other gases, leaving pure nitrogen gas behind. But there is one other problem. The nitrogen might have some moisture associated with it, and we don't want any moisture. So the next step is to pass that gas through some kind of mechanism that dries it out. Now, in one of the secret compartments of my room, I have this nitrogen generator that does all that for me. And I really have to give credit where credit's due to my friend Chris Roberts, who really made all this possible. He's the one that located all the items, he sourced all the equipment, he helped put it all together, and he helped it get to the functioning state that it is today. Now once we've got the clean, dry nitrogen gas, we need a place to store it. My friend Chris went down to Harbor Freight and picked up a little tank for about 20 bucks that we use to store that nitrogen gas under pressure, and we added a little regulator so we can turn a knob and regulate how much gas flows out. And now it might seem a little bit too simple, but that's half the battle in making liquid nitrogen. Once we've got dry nitrogen seeping out at about one PSI, all we have to do is get it cold enough that it liquefies. And this is where we bring in the helium compressor. Now a helium compressor unit is basically just a glorified air conditioning unit. The whole purpose of its existence is to get colder than the boiling point of nitrogen. Now helium has a boiling point around minus 452 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way below the boiling point of liquid nitrogen. Now I think it's Boyle's law that says if you take a gas and compress it, and then let it cool back down, if you rapidly expand it, that gas will get very, very cold. And because we're using helium, we can compress it, cool that gas down, and rapidly expand it to a temperature that's lower than the boiling point of liquid nitrogen. So now that you've got the basic concept, let me explain in a little bit more detail how a helium compressor works. It's charged up with helium gas in a closed loop system. The helium gas is compressed where it heats up tremendously, and we need some kind of a system to cool it down, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But once it is cooled down, it can travel to the cryo head where it's rapidly expanded and cools down to a temperature lower than the boiling point of nitrogen. So what would happen if we had a surface that was colder than the boiling point of liquid nitrogen and we had a small vapor of nitrogen gas blowing at it? That's right, it's gonna condense and it's gonna form small droplets and drip down to the ground. Now, if we're able to catch those droplets into some kind of a glorified thermos, a doer, if you will, then theoretically, over time, those droplets would add up and produce bucketfuls of liquid nitrogen. And that's it, guys. That is exactly how we make liquid nitrogen. Hey guys, just stepping out here for a minute because this is real life. You know what else is real life? Shaving your face. This video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. They sent me a box of razors and asked me to tell you about their services and hook you up with some sweet promos. If you haven't heard about them by now, Dollar Shave Club sends razor blades right to your front door. And since I shave every day, switching to them is really the smarter choice. And if you're old enough to have facial hair, it could be the smarter choice for you as well. Check out the description right now and you'll see a link to dollarshaveclub.com slash thekingofrandom. This will transport you to a really great offer to where you can get your first month's package for only five dollars. The package has an executive razor, four cartridges, and a tube of Dr. Carver shave butter, which is a $15 value, but you get it for only $5. You don't need to overspend on fancy razors to get a quality shave. Keep shaving simple. With Dollar Shave Club, you get quality razors delivered right to your door without any of the hassle. They have free shipping, no hidden fees, and you can cancel anytime you like. And it only takes around 10 seconds to drop down to the description and get yourself hooked up. So seriously, if you have a face and you shave it, stop what you're doing and click the link in the description or go to dollarshaveclub.com slash thekingofrandom. I'm hooking you up with great razors at great prices so you can make the smarter choice and get your shaving stuff on its way. You're literally losing money by not signing up. How you doing? Good, yourself? I'm a member of Dollar Shave Club. Oh, you are? I love it. No kidding? Yes. You want to be in a video? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, time is up. Back to the video. Now let me back up for a second and just talk about the cooling system we use for the helium compressor, which is pretty cool because it's just jury rigged out of three components. My friend Chris and I start out by building a housing for the furnace blower and the radiator so we could suck in tremendous amounts of air and blow it through the radiator and cool down all the liquid inside. Next we ran some poly hoses from the radiator all the way back to the helium compressor, where it runs through a heat exchanger where it soaks in all the heat from the compressed helium, runs it back to the radiator and cools down once again. And this whole system is powered by a sump pump that I got from Home Depot for about 20 bucks. I just built it so it sits inside of a little bucket inside of a bigger bucket and that way if any water splashes out, it's not gonna damage our electronics. 
Now the sump pump runs on normal house power, about 120 AC, but the nitrogen generator and the helium compressor run on 240. And by now I know you've probably got two questions on your mind. How much energy does it actually use and how much nitrogen gets generated? To answer the first question, I don't really know how much power it uses, but it's not enough to make a difference in our monthly electric bill. And to answer the second question, how long does it take to make? Well, to make 30 liters, which fills up my doer, it takes about three weeks. Remember guys, we not only have to get the doer cold enough to where it can hold liquid nitrogen without evaporating, but then we have to fill it the rest of the way up, drip by drip by drip, and that takes a really long time. So where do you find all of this equipment? Well, honestly, we found it on Amazon, eBay, and we found it at University Surplus. And as long as you can find a nitrogen compressor with a nitrogen membrane, a helium compressor, a cryo head, and Jimmy rig your own liquid cooling system, you could probably make one of these for yourself. But as my friend NerdRage says, I'm gonna have to crush your expectations because even jury rigging it together yourself, it's still gonna cost you a lot of money. I've got about a thousand, maybe $1,300 into the unit I've got here. So when we draw it out like this, it kind of looks like a complicated system and there are a lot of moving parts, but what it comes down to are two main essentials. Dry nitrogen gas meeting a very cold surface. The nitrogen condenses, gets liquefied, and then gets captured into some kind of a container that can keep it nice and cold. And that's it. That's the basics of making liquid nitrogen in a nutshell. So there you have it guys, mystery solved. You now know how to make liquid nitrogen by pulling nitrogen right out of the air and getting it so cold that it liquefies. Hey, thanks for joining me for this video. I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then. What does liquid nitrogen do to paper? It's shiny and wet just like a liquid. Now our paper is really, really cold.